Hello once again everyone, and welcome back to Moveset Breakdowns. Now, before I jump back into the world of gaming, I thought it would be fun to do a quick little aside and uh, tackle another film. So today we'll be tackling one of my favorites, of course, and a favorite amongst all fencers, The Princess Bride. Now, in case you have not seen the show before, uh, what I do is I like to go over movesets, uh, specifically usually of video game characters, and then this isn't meant to be a realism analysis, it's meant to be me just going over the various pieces that make up the way the fighter goes and try to learn about them through it. Appreciation of character development through choreography. Um, now the only reason I haven't done film more is really because most times choreography doesn't repeat, unlike in video games where you'll see the character will do the same couple moves over and over again, right? Um, in choreography for film, they tend to never repeat any steps. So while I can kind of dig into it and come up with instances, usually I need to kind of narrow my focus. Um, this is the second time we've tackled film, uh, last time being the unstoppable move from uh, Highlander Endgame, uh, Endgame, rather, not Endgame, anyway. Uh, and today we're going to be tackling not the fight between Inigo Montoya and um, Wesley, but instead the time Inigo took on four men in a hallway. Now, the reason I wanted to cover this fight is, number one, I find it's one of the less appreciated moments of the film. I mean, there's a lot of, the whole thing is gold. But out of all of them, this is the one that I don't hear talked about a whole lot. And it's a shame because it's the only time in the film that we get to see Inigo kind of at his true best. Um, you know, for reference, this is the only time that Inigo faces a normal person. The other two fights that he has, he fights Wesley, who is just best at everything, pretty much. And then he fights uh, the Count, who uses dirty, underhanded tricks from the beginning. So, this is kind of the best example of the swordsman of the group against your everyman. Now, to set the stage for it, where we're going to be is Inigo is standing in the hallway. He's going to be adopting just kind of a low, sort of outside tense up, and then Wesley and Fezzik are going to be behind him. Ahead of him are four opponents, four mooks, um, who I should point out, by the way, are armed in a very specific way. They're all carrying arming swords, um, and they do actually have armor. Now, mind you, it's um, string mail for theater, so it's just spray-painted knitting. But they do have kettle helmets and what looks like nail shirts, so bear that in mind. But what's going to happen is we're having four assailants come at us, and they're coming at us kind of off to my left or off to my right. So it's going to be right, left, sorry, left, right, left, right. Now. Against this first attack, what's going to come in is here comes the thrust. We're going to be using a hanging parry to knock this aside. So here comes the thrust. Just bring my hand over. That deflects this. I don't actually end up hurting the person, even though he does make an ah noise when you do this. But when you bring it over, he ends up now kind of behind me. Don't have to worry about him for a minute, though, because one, he's not going to attack the Fezzik. I wouldn't. And two, here's coming my next move. So hanging parry, retract back, and then we're going to thrust in a low tetsa against our opponent's gut. So here's that again. One, two, okay? Now we gotta deal with that guy behind us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert my hand and chamber my leg back as I execute a thrust behind me. Now, so far, this may seem relatively strange, right? But all of these exist historically. The hanging parry is a kind of universal parry, I think I talked about it somewhat recently, and really does a fantastic job of warding off pretty much any point that could come at you. Following this up with just a simple thrust, of course, nothing crazy. Now this backward thrust doesn't necessarily exist purely in this form. There is an attack launch behind the back in Small Sword, I have a video on it, but there is also a reverse thrust done like this in Myers right here. In which case, the way that play works is you do a hanging parry and then reverse like so. Not exactly the same idea, but nothing that can't make it work. So all you do is, from here, you're just going to turn your hand over, basically like you were sticking into a sheath, and then just step back with your lead leg to execute a thrust straight behind you. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, this requires a decent amount of aim, uh, and mostly luck. He kind of has to be where I expect him to be, but it's not necessarily out of the question, right? So, here's what we got again so far. First mook, parry. Second mook, thrust. Third mook, sorry, first mook again. Inverted thrust. Now from here, our next opponent is going to be coming at us with a cut. And Inigo from this position is going to pull his arm out first and execute a quick mendrito fendente. That would be a cut descending from my right side. So here's that again. Pull, cut, right? 
Now, he's definitely doing this cut ahead of his foot landing. He's trying to get speed here, so boom, and we're actually going to now be using the sort of springiness we've built up. So, here's that down from the side. You just launched your thrust against move number one. Retract, cut, right? Now, from this position, we've dealt with him, we've dealt with the guy behind us, now comes our final nuke. Now our final assailant is coming up with a high cut. And we end up in a bit of an odd situation here, right? What Inigo chooses to do from this position, we just did our cut, we just kind of landed, is he's going to do a small hop down into a salta volta. Now, a salta volta is a simple just head void, basically. Normally you would see it done in this plane. There's nothing necessarily saying that you can't do it sideways, but normally you don't need to. In this case, though, he's definitely stab, cuts, leaping into it to get as low as possible. So, all in all, our pattern ends up being like so. Parry, thrust, back thrust, cut, salta. And then we drop the epic line. Now, individually, why would he choose to do these pieces? And that's something I actually appreciate quite a bit about this choreography is number one, it's varied, it's diverse, it focuses on the thrust, which is cool, and two, all of the actions are real actions just put in a fantastical series. That hanging parry, perfect choice against the thrust. Following that up with a chambered thrust because he has the room, makes total sense. Retracting to now deal with the guy who's behind us. This is probably the most fantastical out of all the actions, but I mean, the guy's behind you and Fezzik can't fight him right now. From here, retracting and launching into a quick mandrito totally makes sense, but definitely the bit that I like the most is of course that Solta Balta, right? Why would he choose to go for that over anything else? Well, a couple things. That cut is coming down pretty much from straight above. So the most natural reaction would be to catch it and then cut on your own, or alternatively to try and launch a counter thrust. Now launching a counter thrust following a mendrito is relatively difficult, right? At least on this side. I could chamber it around again, but the problem with that is that has to now cross over me, and that's gonna take a little bit more time to probably get hung up. So, what Inigo chooses to do is to buy himself as much time as possible for before that cut can hit him so that he can make up for the fact that his sword has to travel further distance. So he goes for the Solta Bolta. Now, as a note for that, really impressed that uh, the actor, Manny, leaps over one of the extras to do this. If you watch it again slowly, you see that the guy, I believe the um, second guy hits, ends up rolling basically right in front of him. So following this back step, he cuts in front of the guy and then has to fully leap him to execute his Solta Volta. So that's just really impressive. Um, just, I don't know how many takes that, takes that took, but it's a really impressive one shot. Either way though, our entire pattern will end up like this. So, hanging parry, low thrust, back thrust, mendrito, Solta Volta. And then we drop the line. Here's that from the side. Hanging parry, low thrust, back thrust, mendrito, solta volta. And we're good. So like I said, a relatively quick one, but it's not a fight scene that gets talked about a whole lot. Um, from an amazing movie, it's like one of the least quoted bits from an amazing movie. Um, and it always stuck out to me because of one, the musical accompaniment, two, the way the last guy like groans and then falls over, um, and three, because I really appreciate it now as an interesting bit of choreography that takes place in a very narrow space and makes the most out of it. Um, really showcases Inigo's skills, and then, <laughs> of course, the Count running away up the hallway is the best thing ever. But, either way, um, next week I'll probably be diving back into games. Probably gonna start off with For Honor. We'll probably throw in a couple other bits in there. If you want me to tackle any more film, uh, by all means, I love tackling this stuff. Um, throw your suggestions in before, and nothing is too specific. I mean, we've pretty much only gone over like two really narrow instances so far. That's just fine. I can really dive into that. Um, just put your suggestions down below. But either way, thank you very much for watching, and we'll go over some other movesets another time.